ladies and gents, welcome to tonight's episode of Poetry Live. Tonight, I'm going to be reading some Philip Marlowe, and I might even, let's try service paint on the top. Uh, I might even be able to get rid of the glare on this screen, even. For anybody tuning in for the first time, this is not usually how the show goes. Usually we don't have to... Hey. Hey, voila! Hello, ladies and Yes! That's it. Philip Marlowe. Tonight, me, Poetry Live. Welcome, everybody. Um, Periscope has cut out all your comments, by the way, so I can't see them at the moment. I'm just switching off the lap, switching on the laptop so I can get your comments and then I can jump into the chat and be a normal person and engage. So hello, oh no, we can do that. Hello, Queen. Hello, Herbert. Hello, hello, Roger. Hello, Jackson. Hello, Lena. Hello, Arcadina. Oh, hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, wow. Stacks of people, hello, hello Danny, hello, hello Karen, hello Gabby, hello Julie, hello Julia, hello Agatha, hello Sarah and Queen, hello 2910, wow Maga, hello, welcome you all, welcome, it went from nobody being here to everybody being here suddenly, so hello, apologies if I've missed anyone out now, um, all of a sudden there were so many of you that I think some of you were cut off at the bottom there, but Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you're in the mood for some Philip Marlowe. It's been a popular request for a while now on the show. So what can I do but oblige you lovely people and get into some Marlowe for this evening? So hello, Adakan. Hello. Come in, come in, come in. Welcome. Is everybody feeling nice and settled down and comfortable? I hope so. I was doing some silly voices for Lemont Arthur earlier, for those of you who didn't catch it. Hello, hello, Roger. And for those of you um, who didn't catch doing some of those voices, well, that's why my throat is feeling a wee bit, a wee bit um, parched. Well, I know you missed it, Sarah. I noticed that you missed it, but you have to catch up with it later. Anyway. Let's, let's go and get into tonight's episode as this, this, well, of that, Queen, that's perfectly acceptable. I will accept being late if you are attending poetry-related business. This is Allegia 5 by Philip Marlowe. In summer's heat, and mid-time of the day, To rest my limbs upon a bed I lay, One window shut, the other open, stood, Which gave such light as twinkles in a wood, Like twilight glimpse at setting of the sun. All night being past, and yet not day begun, Such light to shamefast maidens must be shown, Where they may sport and seem to be unknown. Then came Corina in a long, loose gown, Her white neck hid with tresses hanging down, Resembling fair Semiramis going to bed, or lay, of a thousand wooers sped. I snatched her gown being thin, the harm was small, yet strived she to be covered therewithal, and striving thus as one that would be cast, betrayed herself and yielded at the last. Stark naked, as she stood before mine eye, not one when in her body could I spy, What arms and shoulders did I touch and see? How apt her breasts were to be pressed by me, How smooth a belly under her waist saw I, How large a leg 
and what a lusty thigh, to leave the rest all liked me passing well, I clinged her naked body, down she fell, judge you the rest, being tired she bade me kiss, Jove send me more, such afternoons as this. God bless Christopher Marlowe, the saucy devil that he was. See, just what you want is raise the temperatures in the room tonight. We've had too many sad poems recently. This is, we're going on a bit of a romance trip at the moment, which I'm quite enjoying. I was even thinking of mixing up a little bit at some point and perhaps even switching from dedicating to just one poet to uh, perhaps working off a theme. Who knows? It's all open for grabs in the funness of poetry live. Anyway, this next poem is the passionate shepherd to his love. <laughs> Hello Cameron, hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Come lie with me and be my love and we will all the pleasures prove that hills and valleys, dales and fields and all the craggy mountains yield. There we will sit upon the rocks and see the shepherds feed their flocks by shallow rivers to whose falls melodious birds sing madrigals. And I will make thee beds of roses and a thousand fragrant posies, a cap of flowers and a kirtle embroidered all with leaves of myrtle, a gown made of the finest wool which from our pretty lambs we pull. Fair lined slippers for the cold with buckles of the purest gold. A belt of straw and ivory buds with cobble clasps and amber studs, and if these pleasures may thee move, come live with me and be my love. The shepherd swain shall dance and sing for thy delight each May morning, if these the lights my mind may move, then lie with me and be my love. So hands up in the room, those of you who would be willing to go and lie with the shepherd and be his love at this point in time. I think there might be one or two takers in the room. And we had a sheep theme as well tonight, which I'm sure Danny might like. Sheep plus romance and not in a weird way. So thank you, Julie. Thank you, Queen. Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad, glad you enjoyed that well roger when you find them and i'm sure you will when you find them make sure you treat them to some poetry like that and 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 also mention sheep if they like sheep daddy likes sheep we all like sheep they're lovely and anyway, this next poem is not going to be the whole thing because it's quite long for the whole thing. But I want to read you part of Hero and Leander, Marlowe's long narrative poem. O oh, none but gods have power their love to hide. Affection by the countenance is descried. The light of hidden fire itself discovers and the love that is concealed betrays poor lovers. His secret flame apparently was seen 
Leander's father knew where he had been, and for the same mildly rebuked his son, thinking to quench the sparkles new begun. But love resisted once grows passionate. And nothing more than counsel lovers hate for, as a hot proud horse highly disdains to have his head controlled, but breaks the rein, spits forth the wrinkled bit, and with his hooves checks the submissive ground, so that he loves the more he is restrained, the worse he fares. What is it now? But mad Leander dares, O oh, hero, hero! Thus he cried full oft, and then he got him to a rock aloft, where having spied her tower, long stirred he on and pray the narrow toiling hell spont to part in twain, that he might come and go. But still the rising bellows answered no. With that he stripped himself to the ivory skin, and crying, Love, I come, leapt lively in. Whereat the sapphire visaged God grew proud, and made his capering triton sound aloud. Imagining that Ganymede, displeased, had left the heavens, therefore on him he seized. Leander strived, the waves about him wound, and pulled him to the bottom, where the ground was strewed with pearl. And in low cobble grove, sweet singing mermaids sported with their loves on heaps of heavy gold, and took great pleasure to spurn in careless sorts this shipwrecked treasure. For here the stately azure palace stood, where kingly Neptune and his train abode. The lusty god embraced him, called him love, and he swore he never should return to Jove. But when he knew it was not Ganymede, for under water he was almost dead, he heaved him up and looked on his face, beat down the bold waves with his triple mace, which mounted up intended to have kissed him and fell in drops like tears because they missed him. Leander, being up, began to swim. And looking back, saw Neptune follow him, whereat aghast the poor soul began to cry, Oh, let me visit Hero before I die. The god put Helle's bracelet on his arm, and swore the sea should never do him harm. He clapped his plump cheeks with his tresses played, and smiling wantonly, his love betrayed. He watched his arms, and as they opened wide, at every stroke between them he would slide and steal a kiss, and then run out and dance, and as he turned, cast many a lustful glance, and threw him gaudy toys to please his eye, and dive into the water, and there pry upon his breast, his thighs, and every limb, and up again, and close beside him, swim and talk of love. Leander made reply, You are deceived. I am no woman, I. Thereat smiled Neptune, and then told a tale how that a shepherd, sipping in a veil, played with a boy so fair and kind, as for his love both earth and heaven pined, that of the cooling river durst not drink, lest water nymph should pull him from the brink, and when he sported in the fragrant lawns, goat-footed satyrs and upstirring fawns would steal him thence, ere half this tale was done. I, me, Leander cried, the enamoured sun that now should shine on the Vettis' glassy bower, descends upon my radiant hero's tower. Oh, that these tardy arms of mine were wings, and as he spake upon the waves he springs, Neptune was angry that he gave no ear, and in his heart revenging malice bare, he flung at him his mace. But as it went, he called it in, for love made him repent. The mace returning back, 
his own hand hit, as meaning to be venged for darting it. With this fresh bleeding wound, Leander viewed his colour went and came, as if he rued the grief which Neptune felt in gentle breasts. Relenting thoughts, remorse, and pity rests, and who have hard hearts and obdurate minds, but vicious, harebrained, and illiterate hinds. The gods, seeing him with pity to be moved, thereon concluded that he was beloved. Love is too full of faith, too credulous, with folly and false hope deluding as therefore Leander's fancy to surprise to the rich ocean for gifts he flies. Tis wisdom to give much, a gift prevails when deep, persuading oratory fails. And the, the end of that brief extract of the love between Hero and Leander. And Leander's love and desperation. Despite the demands of gods, despite death, despite hells, despite walls. His determination to conquer them all. To get at his love. I'm going to hello, Rissella. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. I am going to do one last poem by Christopher Marlowe for tonight, ladies and gents. This poem is It Lie Oh sorry, it's not that's the opening line is Whoever loved that loved not at first sight. It lies not in our power to love or hate, for will in us is overruled by fate. When two are stripped, long ere the course begin, we wish that one should love, the other win. And one especially do we affect of two gold ingots like in each respect, the reason no man knows, let it suffice, what we behold is censored by our eyes, we're both deliberate, the love is slight, whoever loved, that loved not, at first sight. Shall I read that one again? I'm going to read that one again for you, ladies and gents, as a little treat. It's only a short one, but it's a beautiful one. It lies not in our power to love or hate. For will in us is overruled by fate when two are stripped. Long before the course begin, we wish that one should love the other win. And one especially do we affect of two gold ingots, like in each respect the reason no man knows. Let it suffice. What we behold is censured by our eyes. We're both deliberate. The love is slight. Whoever loved that love not at first sight. We're both deliberate. The love is slight. There we go. Don't think too much about it. Love is a tempestuous thing. It grabs hold of you. There's no reason to it. If there's too much reason to it, there's not enough love. It needs to just be mad and crazy and passionate. Like everything else. And Vasella, I wish, I wish I could translate into Italian. I really do. Unfortunately, you'll just have to put up with my version. I'm glad you like that, Herbert. Glad you agree. And thank you, Queen. Thank you. Thank you so much. All of you for coming tonight. It's been great to see you and hang out with you and share all of this great stuff with you. Oh, yes, Marvel's fabulous. We should do Marvel next week, Jackson. We should do some Andrew Marvel next week. Um, I like Marvel. 
that that would that's a good that's a good choice there. I, I'd be more than happy to do that. Yes, next week we'll do Marvel. Um, Marvel. Um, I tried doing Summer Howard, and I couldn't find. Um, we might go back and do some Robert Howard. I did if I did some ages ago. Okay, Queen Queen. We um, next week we will do some Robert Howard. But in the event that I can't find enough Robert Howard poems because I've got I've got all of his stories on the shelves downstairs, but I'm and I know I've got some poems, but I'm not sure if I've got enough to fill a half hour. In the event there's not enough Robert Howard, I'll spruce up with some Tolkien. And we'll do Tolkien and Howard. But if I can do a whole Howard show, um, we'll try and get some real Conan stories going in there and do some Howard um, next week. Yes, that's a good plan. Um, I forget who we're doing this week. I've got it written down somewhere, but not here. Um, but this week is all planned out. Very excited. Guess what's coming up on Wednesday, guys. You'll never guess. <laughs> I I I think you'll like all all poetry queen. You'll like some Robert Howard. Well, Sarah, on Wednesday is our two hundredth uh, uh, episode. Wednesday is episode two hundred of my Periscope show. My two hundredth show, which I. Is, is a scarily massive number. I never thought, you know, when I first started out, we'd get anywhere near that. To, to be, like, when I've blogged, I've been lucky to get more than five blogs done before giving up, and to now be on 200 episodes, and um, well, about to be, is pretty, pretty awesome. So thank you so much for being a big part of this. For the 200th episode, I will be reading some more of my cat story, and... Um, the Cats of Hashima Island. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. I'm going to read some more of that. Thank you, thank you, Danny. Thank you, Sarah. I will do some of my cat poem, my epic cat poem, I will share with you on Wednesday night. And I forget who we're doing tomorrow night, but we have got some great poems lined up for you this week. I'm also just revamping the website as well, so that the website can look a bit better. And so that you can use the website to find more of, if you're looking to find some of the old shows that you've missed, or if you want to catch up on things like the Cats of Hashima Island, or catch up on Till Bashing, or go back and listen to season three of Le Mort d'Arthur, or hear the time we did Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, or any of that good stuff, I'm sorting out the website so you guys can do all of that. There's a, where's my, where's my sneak peek? Catch is fab. I'm just trying. I love catch. I'm just trying because I want to do more than just catch. And, and there's lots of, I think, fun articles um, to add to this and background. And especially for putting in some of the background for the poets and um, explaining some of the different things surrounding them and all that fun content. Um, I'm doing that. So that's. That's the website as it stands, um, so that's the designs for it. Doesn't like that now. Now it's the big loading page, but that's that's what I'm just working on, um, hoping to get that sorted for us all um, next, uh, so later this week. Um, so give it a couple more days, and that should all be sorted. That can go up, and then if you want any cool content, you'll know where to find it which will make me happy because it'll all be in one place and that'll be easy to find. So thank you. Glad you guys approve of that. Glad um, you're on board with it. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that. Thank you so much for coming tonight, guys. Jackson, are you doing a show tonight? Because I need to go and, and code. So I'm, I'm going to be coding. So I'm not going to be able to type type um, on there, but I am going to be able to sit and listen to some shows. Fab! Brilliant Jackson, I'm looking forward to it. For anyone who hasn't watched uh, Jackson's poetry show, please go and follow him and listen. 
Precisely, Sarah. That's that's what I want to do. So my novel readings will go on there. The Le Morte d'Arthur stuff will go on there. Um, the poetry stuff will. Um, Fogrolls Island will go on there. It will all kind of all sit there so it's easy to locate. And the schedules for the episodes can go up on there. Um, and any sort of behind the scenes background content as well should be there. So... It should be great fun. Thank you so much, guys, for starting off the week with me. So thank you, Jackson and Danny, Herbert, Karen, Julie, Agatha. Thank you, Sarah, Queen, Rosella. Thank you, Tunk. Thank you so much, guys. It's been great to see you. Great to share this with you. I'm having a great start to the week. I hope you guys are as well. And I can't wait to see you all tomorrow. And please, anyone who isn't following Jackson already, go follow Jackson and see if you can go and watch that thing. Yeah, coding's fun, Queen. There's nothing quite as fun as sitting with class selectors and trying to sort everything out. That's what I live for. No, it's not what I live for. I live for, for this stuff. But the other stuff's a mean to an end, so... I'll crack on with that. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great night, evening, um, morning, afternoon, wherever you are.